So what we want to do uh, through this presentation is to understand a little bit more about why you want to use false color images and understand a little bit more about how they're generated. So first of all, we'll just remind ourselves of the AM spectrum of light and remember that what the human eye can see is only a very, very small proportion of the full amount of light energy that can be reflected from any particular surface. And what the satellites can do is to see beyond the visible wavelengths of light and allow us to see what we would otherwise not be able to see. So when you're looking at Sentinel-2, for example, there are 13 bands, 12 plus 8 and 8A, 13 bands in particular at different wavelengths of light across that spectrum. And these are the three bands that represent the visible wavelengths of light that we can see but it collects this information beyond that. Let's take it out of a table and kind of map it onto a graph like this. So the first point that I'd want to make is that any one of these bands that are represented here, band one, two, three, four, and so on, each band takes um, and captures a certain wavelength of light and it's represented as a monochrome image, as a black and white image. For example, here's band four, which represents the visible wavelengths of light that we see as the color red. It's this monochrome image here at the moment. And uh, where you've got dark uh, aspects of this image, this photograph, it means that there's very little light reflected off it. And the lighter colors, you get more. So there's the clouds that are very bright white, so they reflect a bit. This is Semeru Volcano in Indonesia. So there's the top of the volcano, which is showing where they've got the ash that's come out of the volcano. And you can see down here some of the previous ash flows and paraclassic flows and lahars, the mud flows that have come out of this volcano. And um, you can make them out there. So how do we turn this into then um, a true color image? If band four is a monochrome image, how do we turn it into a true color image? Well, whenever we're producing these images, we've got three output channels and the same kind of principle would operate whenever you're looking at um, computer monitors or TVs or cameras and things like that that you would take. Um, it takes these three output channels that represent the three different wavelengths of light that we can distinguish with our own eyes, red, green, and blue. To turn this into a visible wave wavelength of light, you need to match the band with the correct color as we would see it. So band four goes on to red, band three would go on to green, band two would go on to blue. So the true color would look like that. So let's take a look at those three bands. Remember, each individual band is a monochrome image and that's what the three of them look like. So you can see here, first of all, that actually there's not a huge amount of difference. Um, maybe band three is slightly lighter, band four or band two is slightly darker, but there's not a huge amount of difference. So what image do you think you're going to get when you combine these? It's going to be a color image, obviously, but is there going to be a huge amount of contrast and it's going to be a lot of detail you can pull out? Well, this is what you get. There's the colors that are there and you know, with the reflectance being light around the top of the volcano, you can see that. Maybe drawing a little bit here in band two and band four, we can make out where the um, material from the volcano has come down. But there's not a huge amount of contrast that we can see from an image like this, at least compared to images at different wavelengths. So what if I go from this to a near infrared? What if I start then to move out of the wavelengths of light that we alone or we can see with our eyes and into some of that additional wavelengths of light that Sentinel gives us access to. I'm going to draw in here band eight and all of a sudden, my goodness, the first thing to note is that clearly there's a huge amount more being reflected here than in bands three and four. There's a lot more light available to be received at this wavelength than we can see with our human eyes. So what kind of image do you think I'm going to get whenever I combine these together? Okay, remember I'm assigning band 8 to red. So what color is the image going to be mostly? It's going to be mostly red. <clears throat> because we have said to the output here, see all these 
really, really high reflecting surfaces. Put those in as red. But the low reflecting surfaces here of the material that's come out of the volcano is um, standing out an awful lot more in this image than it was in the previous image. So in contrast to the visible light, this is allowing us to see much, much more clearly, much, much more easily, more readily, the different surfaces, different land uses, different uh, things that are being captured in these images. The question is why? Why is it that all of a sudden when we went to that band eight, that it became much, much brighter like that? Let's come back to our EM spectrum, electromagnetic spectrum. Remember again, when we looked at spectral signature, the spectral signature of vegetation looked like this. We discovered when we looked at this is that the vast, vast majority of um, light that is given off by vegetation is given off in the near infrared, which we cannot see. It reflects much, much more here than in the visible wavelengths of light. So if we include something here, the image is going to be a lot brighter, as you can see here. So the near infrared, um, which is also called false color outputs, bands eight, four and three. So we're gonna hold on to bands four and three. We're getting rid of band two and we're replacing it now with band eight. There's band eight. And not a bit of wonder then that we get these much, much brighter images in band eight, giving us a more overall contrasting image here. That allows us really to see the vegetation very clearly and pick out the non-vegetation elements very clearly, including the ash <clears throat> and the mud that comes out of the volcano. So we can spot where the volcano's hazards have gone much more readily. And the non-vegetation elements include the settlements. We can see where the settlements are much more clearly and how much more at risk they are. So going into the false color image helps us to see better. Now let's take a look at another false color image. And this time we're going to look at a shortwave infrared. Okay, so what bands does it draw from? Well, we're holding on to band four. We're holding on to a version of band eight. It's a just slightly narrower set of wavelengths of light. But we're also introducing now band 12. It's band 12's way up here, right? So question for you. I'm about to show you these monochrome images for these bands. Which one of those two bands is going to be brighter? Do you think? Let's have a look. There's band eight. There's band 12. Band eight is twice as brighter because look, there's a lot more um, light energy being reflected from the vegetation here. Less here, so it's not gonna be quite so bright. Band eight A, which is being reflected by the vegetation, is assigned to the green channel. So the green here is the vegetation. And again, these contrasts come out really nicely between where the vegetation is and the non-vegetation. You can see the ash and the material coming out of the volcano, and you can see some of the urban areas as well. So using the wavelengths of light beyond what's visible, this is the only one within the visible wavelength of light. Looking beyond the wavelengths of light, we can see more. A question though, why would we want to use band? 12. I mean, considering this is band 8A that gives us all this additional reflectance, why would we want to look at band 12? Okay, for that, I want to come to more recent satellite images of um, Simaru Volcano. Here it is up here. So this is a visible wavelength of light. I wonder what you can see here. You can see these browns. This is just after the volcano erupted. And you can definitely see from this visible light image some of the area where the ash the paraclassic flows went. We go to our near infrared, the false color image, and all of that definitely makes that stand out better. Remember, uh, vegetation band eight, and we've assigned it to the red channel. The vegetation reflects an awful lot more, so it's brighter and it stands out in contrast. We can see this. But what if I go to the short wave radiation? Because do you see this little darker bit here and the lighter bits here? Let's have a look. 
There's a shortwave radiation. Remember, band 8A now we've assigned green, so that's the bit that's really reflective. But look at what we can see here in bringing in band 12. Why would we introduce it? Because it's more sensitive to the heat from the lava flow. It's a really good band for us to look at volcanoes because that part of the EM spectrum of light um, really picks up the heat from the bit of the lava flow that came out the top of the volcano better. So that's been a little bit of an introduction to um, some of the rationale and reasoning behind why you would use different colors um, to produce these false color images and why it is that they work and what it is that is revealed whenever you use them.